Hello everybody! In today's episode we are going to talk about feature flags and how they can improve the way you ship software. So feature flags are basically conditionals. You can hide a feature behind a toggle and you can do some crazy automation. Maybe not crazy, but you know, you can do some impactful things. So for example, maybe you only want to show something for people that are, you know, a paying customer, or maybe you want to do some A-B testing. With feature flags, you're able to do this. So let's see how quickly and easily we can set them up in our project. And I am going to use Growthbook. However, you can use whatever the freak you want. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So I have a fresh Laravel project and uh, an account here with Growthbook. So I will create a new directory called services. And here I will create a feature flag service. So this is basically a class. That's how we are going to use. So putting this into services is a bit weird. Maybe it's action. Um, this is more like a, a function, pretty much. Okay, so the growth book has a PHP SDK, which we are going to copy and install in our project. So let's just paste this command and wait for it to install. So after this is installed, what we can do is we can create a constructor here. And what we are going to pass to this constructor and basically the, the, the use case that we want to have here is that we would like to instantiate this class somehow. So we would create a new, you know, feature flag service. Uh, maybe we could do something like four, then pass the user and check it's enabled and then pass a flag. This seems seems like a, a nice developer experience. All right, so it seems that our constructor should accept a user. And then we should instantiate uh, our growth book. So let's see how we do this. Let's basically copy this line from the documentation. And if we paste it here, let's in the import uh, we need to pass in some features to this an array and then we need to pass the attributes of the user but first let's instantiate this instance so we can do protect at um probably read only growth book and let's call it maybe instance uh, so now we can sign it so now we need to pass those attributes. So maybe we could do something like this, get attributes and then pass the user. Oh, the user is global, so we don't need to, to pass that. So let's go with protected uh, function, get attributes. And these are the things that you'd basically want to to be able to create a good conditional on. So for example, uh, maybe you want to pass the ID, right? So this would be this user ID. Maybe you want to pass a team ID and only enable this, you know, certain feature for, for certain teams. Um, I don't have this specific column in my, in my model. So yeah, maybe, you know, we want to pass a role so we can do this user role. Maybe you want to pass the billing plan, so you know we could like this user is premium, maybe something like that. Or better yet, we could create a beta system in our app. So we could do is beta and we could do this user beta. And this way, you know, we can like create an early access program. So yeah, this is taken care of. Now we need to get features and implement our isEnabled method. So here we can create a public function called isEnabled. Here we'll pass our flag. And what we need to do is simply return this instance is on flag. And this will obviously return a boolean. Okay, so now for the features, what we need to do, 
Uh, is we need to make uh, an HTTP call, and this should be protected. Protected function get features. This will return an array. To take a look at this documentation here, they basically want us to make a, a call to their to their method, to their endpoint, and get the features key. And this is what we should provide to to this method. So let's do this. So what I'm going to do is just uh, do a try, catch, and here we need to, you know, uh, cache throwable. And we basically want to return HTTP as JSON get, let me just copy that URL. Then we want to get the JSON and we want the features key. There's nothing, we want an empty array. So the only thing that we need to do is, you know, put this value to a config. So let's just do config services that Grove book that uh, features key, maybe. Yeah, let's go with that. So if you go to our services, we can add Grove book. And here we can, we can paste our key and then just call the environment variable. So Grove book features key. We obviously need to add this to env.example, so it's in version control, and whenever we push to production, we know that we should fill this key as well. And we obviously also need to paste this key to our environment variable. Okay, so if we go to the settings and then to API keys, we can create a new SDK endpoint, but before we do that, we need to create environments. So we can do this from features, then environments. Here we can add a new environment called you know, local. So after we did, we can go to our API keys and now we can just copy the, uh, the key for the local environment. Let's, let's paste it here. And now here we just need to pass the return value of this method right here. So we can just this get features. And you know what would be nice uh, is we could, well, we could do something like that. That's the first thing. Uh, we could also throw this in the cache because we don't want to hit the endpoint any uh, every time. Uh, whenever there is a you know a, a hit to our app, because this would be wasteful. So we can just you know remember this in the cache for some time, uh, especially because it's not dependent on the user. So we can simply. So we can simply cache the whole thing and don't worry about anything, which is always a good thing. So now let's just do this. And I think that we should be good. So what we can do is we can open our artisan thinker. What we want to do first is we want to create a public function uh, for, and here we want to pass this user. And this would basically return new static user. And now we want to use this, right? Because remember, we talked about this, about this syntax that we want to support. So let's do feature black service for user first is on test. <laughs> and I obviously did a mistake because here the for would be a static function. So let's try this again. And we got, uh, it should be is enabled, not is on, is enabled. And we get false. So this is pretty cool. Okay, so let's create our first feature. So here we can click add feature, then we can give it a name that makes sense. So for example, chat new design. Maybe by default, we want it to be off. I'm sorry, uh, this should be enabled and this should be off. So here we'll do a simple behavior for now, it's everywhere. Let's go back to our code. Let's open a tinker. Let's check if our first user has chat enabled. And we can see that they don't. 
So this is great. Now, in order to make sure that this is truly working, we can do something that will force our user to pass the, the conditional here. So for example, if we want to show the new design to only to people whose ID is you know, less than five, we can do this. So if the ID, maybe let's do, is equal to one, let's save this, review and publish, then publish, and we clear the cache and run the tinker again for this user. So if we do this, we can see that it fails. The reason for that is because we didn't change the type of our attribute by default. They say it's a string, but uh, that's not the case for our system. So let's change that to number. And now we just need to clear the cache. We can see that it returns true. So this is exactly what we wanted. Now we can have a feature that works for some people while it's hidden for other people. And you can change that with a flip of a, a button. And the best thing is that not only you can change this, but any people from your marketing or your CEO or whoever, they decide that the feature should be rolled out to more users than the condition says, they can change the condition, which is amazing. Also, if you ever do a deploy and something goes wrong, you can simply you know, hide the feature that, that didn't work. So this way, you can ship pretty much daily, which is pretty amazing. Now what you could do and what I like to do in general is create a new enum. So let's create a directory and here we can create a new enum. So we can call it feature flag. Maybe let's call it feature type or just feature. Let's let's go with just feature. That sounds great. So this would be an enum, and this would map to a string. So we can do something like uh, chat new design, and you know this would map to this value here. And you know what? We can even call it a feature flag. So we couldn't be feature flag service be feature flag. So then it just reads better. It would be feature flag for user is enabled. That's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, the only thing that I would change is I would get our feature enum here. Here we would use the value. And the last thing that we would do is create a function that would return all of the all of the flags that are on and off for a user in case we need to pass this to a front end, for example. So this is pretty simple. We can do public function, get all flags. This would return an array. So uh, we could do something like return collect feature cases, map with keys, function flag, this would map so that flag value maps to this is enabled flag. Does this make sense? And this would return to array. So yeah, we could do something like this. And let's add another feature. So maybe onboarding new flow. Onboarding new flow. Let's save this. Okay, and now let's do feature flag for user is enabled. This will fail for a multitude of reasons. Because we want to do feature flag for user is enabled. Uh, app services. All right, and now we need to pass our app enums feature. So chat new design. And this will return true. So now we just have the same thing, but it's better typed. We can also do get all flags that will return you an array of features and whether or not they are turned on for this customer. 
So what you could do is, uh, I mean, I usually don't use the blade, but yeah, you could do something like feature flag or we don't have out, so I will just do, you know, user find one, get all flags. I mean, for blade, if you're passing this to blade specifically, right, you would just pass the class and then the welcome page, we could do something like if flags is enabled and then you could do, you know, feature onboarding new flow, for example. Or maybe let's go with chat because it's enabled for our cat user. You have new chat. We'll just add a bit of styling so we can see this. Yeah, so if we load the page, we can see that you have new chat. If we were to change our user and you know create another one, which um change an email address, and if we were to you know hard code it here to two. You would not see that. So that's you know the cool piece. If you were building a REST API, you could do just response JSON flags, uh your flag for user first, get all flags. Do something like that, reload the page, and you can uh see your keys here. And you know, you could you could render your front end ac accordingly. So that's what well, teacher flags are, they are super cool, you should start using them.